I want to compliment you because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we have. Well, no, I've been waiting to hear that. <laughs> you're, not even, that to you're, not even, Nova. you're not even curious what the compliment is. I love that. No, no interest. Man. You're just happy it's a compliment. You're gonna tell me no, uh, first of all, I've known you a long time. Uh, always consistent and hilarious. And then you did this podcast what? back in June. Long time. Was it Three Little Pigs? And when you were on that podcast, I love that. Uh, first of all, you said you had mixed feelings about being a friend, which is fine. I've evolved. You've evolved. Yes, the culture has evolved. You know, during COVID, I sat around, I did some real soul searching, and I said, maybe I am okay with Conan O'Brien existing in the world. Well, so one good thing came out of COVID. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, but on, on, the, uh, on that podcast, you described this project you were working on. And let me say something. Everybody loves that. I mean, you came on and you said, well, I have this dream. I want to make this movie. And you want to be like a romantic comedy. You know, a gay romantic comedy. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, okay, yeah, but everybody says they've got a project in mind that they're, that's going to be available someday in the future if all goes well. Right. Here you are now back on the podcast. And you've made the movie in your promoter. We made the movie. It is coming out. It's not only coming out, it's coming out at a wide release made by Universal Studios in thousands of theaters all over North America and then, strangely, the world. Right. Um, except the countries that are homophobic, which is interesting. Yeah, wait, there won't be a Saudi Arabian premiere of my gay rom com. Well, wait, that, I, that's where I wanted to see it. Well, I'm sorry. No, I did. I called the Cineplex Odeon in Saudi Arabia. Arabia, oh, and I have said I want my ticket to Bros, no. the uh, Billy Eichner groundbreaking uh, rom-com, and, and they were kept saying it is not available, and I said that's, that's a glitch. Yep. No, not a glitch. It's just uh, how it is in certain parts of the world. Um, but I'm happy that it's getting released elsewhere, where they don't hate gay people. This is, uh, this is, but this is landmark because, it's, it's, first of all, I mean, I want to talk about the whole arc of this movie because that's the kind of part. Yeah, I broke six hours. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna need more than that, but okay. <laughs> no, I looked into it. Six hours will cover it. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited for you because your mission statement in this movie is if you're not in and I thought that is so intriguing to ask you to talk about that. Well, Bros, which is the rom com I have coming out, produced by Good Apatow, who all of you probably know is made some of the funniest movies of the past 20 years, Bridesmaids and Trainwreck and 40 Year Old Virgin, the list goes on and on, and I wrote it with Nick Stoller, and Nick directed it, and he directed Sir, uh, Forgetting Sir Marshall and Neighbors, and you know, these guys have a great legacy of making great comedies, and Nick came to me uh, back five years ago and said, I want my next movie to be a romantic comedy, but I think it would be cool to invite a gay couple, but he acknowledged that he's not gay, and uh, he asked me if I would write it with him, and I could star in it, and all went well, and he would direct it. And I said, obviously, yes, a huge opportunity, one that I never saw coming in my life. Um, but the first thing I said to Nick is, even before I knew what the story of the movie would be, I said, it has to be authentic, right? You can't just make When Harry Met Sally and think you can just swap in two gay guys and have the story play out the same way, because it wouldn't, because... You know, yes, there is a lot of overlap in straight relationships and gay relationships, but also it is a little different. Two men together is different, and there's a lot of comedy to be mined from that, and also a lot of, you know, uh, poignant moments and more thought provoking moments. And it's just a different experience, and I think a lot of the LGBTQ characters we've seen, and we're seeing way more of them than we used to, especially in streaming and indie films and on the internet, of course, and that's fantastic. That is a wonderful thing. But so much of it is done with an eye towards making us these, like, cutesy, two-dimensional characters that really are nothing like the actual gay men I know in my life. Right. Or like me, you know, I watch a lot of those shows and I, a lot of those sitcoms, and even when they're very funny, I, I think, I don't know who those people are. 